did at the convention well, while it was working was I handed out this diagram to everybody in the audience because I didn't I didn't want it suppressed. I wanted everybody to try to build this. Uh, unbeknown to me, I didn't realize that they couldn't do the switching circuits. And I did make a few mistakes here. Like one of the mistakes I made was I misnumbered the pulse width modulator, which confused everybody. Later I tried to straighten that out. And then in the book, it was even because when Ike was going to make a mechanical switch, and he did publish this book, Okay, experiments with the Crom Ray and the Brandt Tesla converter. And so, in, back in here, in the book, there is the same circuit. Is that the one that you made the mistake on? Yes, okay. with the same mistake yeah. in the IC. It was later on straightened out. And in this little book, I was trying to explain how this switching actually worked and, and why the machine actually worked and what you could do with the machine. So to understand all this, you have to understand uh, differentials in, in what potentials are in, uh, across the switches and everything, and then you can make this thing work. But I, Ike took it further. Just, just a quick question. Who, who was Ike? Ike Mueller, Mueller what worked for NASA. They worked for NASA. So, obviously, I think what this was going to end up was a way to keep all the batteries charged on the satellites or something that they were working on. Now, whether they ever succeeded, well, I heard that they did succeed uh, by opto-coupling it, and we will get into that in a little bit. But and, and when was this book written? Well, 1984. 1984, yeah. And that was from the Tesla book company. And now we're still publishing that. Yeah, 1984. Okay. And so if you, if you go back in the book, Ike, you can see, well, it's kind of hard to see because you see that he's clip leaded everything and he's using a mechanical switch here. So when one of the clip leads, he's using automobile batteries here. And so when he's doing this, and the currents are going through here. Um, the clip leads kept burning off. Well, he didn't report that in the book, and, but he did do the charts, and you can see that the batteries were charging and everything, and something failed. Probably this switch that he put in here. But he, he, did, he did show a chart before a clip lead burned off of all the batteries up here while he's running a 300 watt load on the other side. Okay, now, what I, what I basically want to do is explain it to everybody because everybody's demanded that I explain this. You know, it, it, we get letters all the time. Could you please explain the Tesla switch? We can't make this work. Well, by the way, this is very hard to see, but when you run the Tesla switch and you get it into resonance and you get the switching just right, what you get is arcs like this. And, and it, it's explained in this book what we were doing to do that. And what we were doing was getting the resonance between the differential and then we would, and we show that right here. So I'll explain that in a minute. Okay. And so I think that the first thing to do with this is explain number one that because I want it clarified that we used this switching regulator, which at the time was brand new by RCA and all the engineers were starting to use it, because you could time it, you could get the time and you had it you had phases. 
you could go from zero to 180 and stuff like that. So it would go back and forth, back and forth. So you could switch these banks easy with this. And this was the SG3524N. That should have been the number on the diagram here. But I don't know what possessed me at the time. I just made an error. And so I'm here to clarify the error. Okay. It's taken me a few years to because it's <laughs> been almost now since 1984. Since 25 years. Yeah. So I guess the first thing to do with everybody is, unless you have any more questions. No. Um, I guess the first thing to do with